is a ghastly crime so unconscionable one woman is speaking out tonight grave robbers spokane police have arrested a man suspected of acting as a modern day grave robber what kind of a person would vandalize a grave grave robbing is not necessarily anything new for example in england there were many graves that were robbed Typically, they would steal the body and take them to doctors so they could understand what's inside the body. In other cases, they would steal the dead's clothes or valuable things that were buried with the dead. But whatever the case might be, there is a lot of taboo around this specific form of robbery. I mean, it makes sense. You're stealing from the dead. So in the case of John Baptiste, the story is not a new story by any means. However, the effect it had on this particular community was a story that was pretty unique. A story that actually involves three people. These three people are Moroni Clausen, Henry Heath, and of course, John Baptiste. Let's first start the story with a young man named Moroni Clausen. Moroni, who also went by Rome, was born in Missouri on the 1st of January, 1837. His family was part of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and as such, faced the hardships that many families faced during the early days of the church. These hardships are what led their family, as well as many members of the church, to make the trek to Salt Lake City, Utah. During this time, Moroni and his brother, George, became close and were living together in what is now Draper, Utah. George then married Ellen Manhart. On the 1st of January, 1859, Roan or Moroni married Eliza Manhart, Ellen's sister. Moroni at some point fell in with a gang called Hounds, led by William Hickman. During this time, it was common for outlaws to steal cattle from the Mormons and then sell them to the army, or vice versa and steal from the army and sell them to the members of the church. There's a strong evidence that Moroni was part of these outlaws that participated in this practice. However, we only really know of one time he was caught because it was captured in a newspaper article. In December 1861, a new governor, John W. Dawson, took office. Governor Dawson was already not really liked in Utah, but he would add a cherry on top to the dislike the people had for him. A Deseret News article from January 1st, 1862, talks about a scandal involving a prominent widowed woman. In the article, it also states that the governor even tried to send hush money to the woman so she wouldn't tell anyone. There are really not any details on what he actually did or what even happened. All we know is that it was bad enough that it caused the governor to fear for his life in Utah. In that same newspaper article, it ends by stating that he left in company of his physician, Dr. Chambers, and bodyguards, Lot Huntington, Jason and William Luce, and Moroni Clausen. Ex-Governor Dawson wrote a letter he and Dr. Chambers were attacked and robbed at Mountain Dell, Ephraim Hanks Mail Station. He had left Salt Lake City that afternoon by overland stage. When nearly out of town, Ephraim Hanks rode up and said that there were some desperate men in the city who might follow him. The governor asked his help to guard him, but having other business, Ephraim said that he would send Moroni Clausen, who would do just as well. Moroni came up and introduced himself. The governor then gave Moroni five dollars for his troubles. Clausen and the governor rode ahead to the mail station. After supper, the crowd got drunk and increased in numbers. Clausen went to Hank's sleeping apartment, where he had often spent the night when passing. 
he assured that the governor would not have any trouble. However, it was likely Moroni knew something would probably happen. A short time later, the governor went to his coach and found some blankets and other items had been stolen from their stage. As the governor and Dr. Chambers began to walk away because of their fear, they were beaten by first Wood Reynolds and others. Later in his statement, he then lists his attackers, the names of the ruffians who are Jason Luce, Wood Reynolds, Lot Huntington, and Moroni Clausen, the traitor. A short time after the governor was attacked, while evading the law, Lot Huntington and John P. Smith stole a horse named Brown Saul from a guy named John Benyon. Little did they know that John Benyon was good friends with a man named Orrin Porter Rockwell. Now Porter Rockwell, as urban legend would have it, was known for killing people and being an assassin of sorts. So John Benyon's son, Sam, was angry at the missing horse and with some friends tried to follow the outlaws. Porter Rockwell's help was enlisted and he followed them to Faust's mail station in Rush Valley. He and a posse surrounded the station in the cold night and waited until morning. Law Huntington went to the corral and got Brown Saul, the stolen horse, and Porter shot him dead. After this, Clausen and, and Smith gave up. Porter took Lot's body and the other two back to Salt Lake by stage the next day. Once they were in Salt Lake, Porter turned Clausen and Smith over to four Salt Lake City police and went to care for his horse and to rest. Before he could even unsaddle his horse, he heard shots and went out to find that the prisoners both dead. 